Hello and welcome to part 4C of the Hives PCB Design with KiCad series. My name is Ben and I'm going to be your guide today yet again. Uh, as we've been going through part 4, it covers the whole of uh, the schematic creation process. Part 4C, this segment, is going to be covering actually wiring or connecting the symbols together. As with the previous videos, there'll be plenty of opportunities for recommended pausing and playback um, so that uh, you can kind of follow along with me and um, do the steps on your own. Let's jump into it. So before we get into it, uh, just a reminder of the flashlight circuit we're developing, as always. Um, note that this image was not taken from KiCad, it was done in draw.io, uh, and therefore the symbols and graphics are going to be slightly different than the ones you'll see in KiCad, but um, they're most very similar, most of them. And this is a reminder of where we stood at the end of part 4B. All of the components were down and arranged to look like the schematic in the previous slide, as well as the one in the recommended um, schematic or recommended uh, circuit in the data sheet. Um, if you've forgotten anything, any parts, or to move the stuff around, I either recommend that you pause the video here and go move them around or go back to uh, one of the previous videos, either 4B or 4A or those associated PDFs and skim them again to remind yourself of what we're about to do. So components in a schematic can be connected either directly or indirectly. Directly means that uh, two pins um, on the two components are connected with a specific wire with a it's a digital it's an actual line on the schematic indirectly means using labels to name the nodes and then as long as the two pins that are supposed to be connected are named the same thing they are connected through a net they are electrically connected through what's called a net of that name it's not the best example or um, description, but we will, uh, I'll demonstrate this in a few minutes and we'll, you'll see what I mean. Um, but for now, we're gonna start with the actual physical, not physical, but digital direct connections with wires. So as I mentioned, yeah, so we'll start with the wires. So wires are connected in one of four ways. Um, you can either uh, click and release on a symbol pin to start a wire. You can tap W to start a wire at the cursor's current location. You can click the wire icon in the upper, uh, in the action toolbar on the right hand side. It's the fifth one down from the top to enter wiring mode. And then you can click to start a wire or you can go click wire in the place menu on the top. Um, whichever way you want, um, you should go ahead and try connecting the right terminal of the switch um, that's pin two of part, part labeled SW1 to the um, IC's enable pin, EN, that's pin uh, four on the lower left of that symbol. Um, I would recommend pausing the video here to try it out before continuing. Great, so that should have been pretty easy. What happens if you connect uh, the U1's pin six, that's V in, to the top pin of C1? So you might have done something like this. Is that okay? Not quite. There are two issues, uh, one visual and one electrical. Um, first, the wire coming off the pin at an angle looks funny, and it's not always clear which, um, like if there are a bunch of pins, which one it's gonna be connected to. It's better to have the, the wire come straight off of the pin or off of the connection point for just a little bit at least first before angling around. The second, which is actually definitely more important, is the fact that there's this dot here, which is known as a junction. That means that there is an electrical connection between these two wires. And that's not what we want here because VN should not be connected to the enable pin like this. Um, so we need to make sure to disconnect that. Um, so you can either delete the wire segments individually by clicking them and hitting delete, or you can control Z to undo the segment. Um, and then I would remake them. Um, if you're continuing to draw this wire and getting it in this bend orientation, you can click the slash, the one with the, um, the question mark over it, uh, on your keyboard to actually flip the bend angle to make it in the other angle. So great, it should look like this. Look how much cleaner this looks. There's also no junction, which means that their wires are just crossing. They're not actually connected, which is important. 
So I'm going to go ahead here and you should pause the video again to actually wire up a bunch of the rest of the schematic on your own. Same process, nothing different about it. Um, you'll see that there are junctions in this schematic um, and you can you don't necessarily have to have the same junction nodes here, but there is an add junction button on the in the action toolbar kind of towards the middle bottom. Um, you can also add and connect pins or sorry, add wires from pins as well as from other wires. So that can be helpful. Um, don't wire the FB, the feedback pin in the lower right of the IC and don't um, don't wire the ground or battery positive battery terminal connections because we're going to worry about those um, in a second here. So take a few minutes for that. Great, yours should look something like this, hopefully, something similar. It doesn't have to look like this at all. That's not required by any means. It just might make it easier to follow along. Um, as long as the components are connected, it's totally fine. Um, again, schematics are for you to read. So the easier and cleaner they are, the easier they are to read and the easier they are to understand their function, which is really the kind of important part about all of this. This schematic is really very straightforward and really simple. So connecting all of these components together is really actually quite straightforward. But uh, what if we had, uh, had to connect two components on opposite sides of this diagram, for instance? Or what if we had a bunch of components, 16, 20, more than that, across the entire sheet, like a bunch of LEDs that were all in parallel? Or what if we had to label, or um, sorry, connect them across different sheets? So the answer here is labels. And I mentioned this before, but labels allow us to name wires and nodes. Nodes being um, basically any connection point between two or more pins. Um, so nets are nodes and wires that share a name specifically. Uh, there are, nets are also the ones that aren't named, like unnamed wires are also considered nets. They just don't get, they're just unnamed nets. Um, so any pin that's connected to the same net or any pins that are connected to the same net are considered electrically connected. So we can take advantage of that. Um, we're going to label the FB node and then connect it to the R1 D2 node kind of at that bottom there. And I'll point them out. This is the FB node and here's the R1 D2 node. We're going to connect that. Now we could connect it directly with a wire. I get it. But just for, um, you know, the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to use a net instead. So the way to actually make a net is to start by drawing a wire stub from each of those terminals and leaving them unconnected. A wire stub is just a short length of wire. It's not, um, it doesn't go all the way, but a short length of wire. Um, to end it, just double click where you want the stub to end. Uh, you have to obviously start it first, but then double click to where you want the stub to end, um, like I've done here. Um, and then you're going to add a label and that defines the net's name. So you're going to hit L that's the keyboard L, or you can tap the net lab, sorry, the net label icon over on the right there in the middle, um, to open the label properties window. Now I'll mention this here, um, which isn't super relevant for this, but just so you're aware L and this process L describes a local label, meaning it exists. The net only exists on this sheet. If you're connecting to a net that exists on another sheet, it's you can use local labels if there are other connections within the sheet, but it's like much, much strongly preferred to use global labels. And what a global label is, is literally just a label that connects um, throughout the entire schematic rather than just on the single sheet. Um, and it's good for identifying. It's very useful for identifying that, oh, hey, this net isn't just on the sheet. It's also on other sheets. Um, but we only have one sheet, so we can just use local labels without any issue. So this is a label properties window. Um, you can type the name of the label or the name of the the desired name into the label box there. Um, and just go ahead and click OK. The rest of this is formatting. The fields are way beyond or in a more advanced um, technique that we're not really worried about right now. Uh, there are some restrictions on la label names as well. Um, mostly there are some reserved ones like ground, GND, or like plus five volts. Those things are typically reserved, um, but uh, you shouldn't have to worry about that here. Um, there is a drop down as well if you have lots of labels uh, or lots of nets. Um, it can be helpful if you don't remember what net you're trying to connect to or trying to label. You can use that drop down and it'll show you all of the local nets, specifically the local ones, not the global ones. 
Um, so click OK when you're done. Um, so I named mine FB for feedback, which is totally fine for this contrived situation, but it's really bad for a larger schematic where there might be many feedback signals. Um, you might, it's much preferred to actually, um, it's strongly preferred to uh, say FB and then like the part name, for instance, or some identifier that tells you which feedback signal it is. So uh, go ahead and left click on the wire stub to assign um, the name that you're that's currently anchored to the mouse to assign that name to the wire. So you can assign it, uh, you can place it at any point on the wire. Uh, it doesn't have to be at the end, um, just somewhere on that wire and then hit escape to exit the label mode. Um, yours should look something like this and you can do exactly the same thing in either direction from the uh, partner node. That's the node between the lowest diode, the lowest LED there and the resistor. And I'll give you, you should probably pause the video here to do that. Take a minute. If you forgot, it's here. And it should look something like this. Excellent work. And notice that I rotated this one as well. So it was a little more clear which wire it was referring to. Sometimes if it's not like over the wire, it can be unclear where you're talking about. But now that you see this, you can see that two net stub, two wires, even if they don't end anywhere useful, but two wires have this, are named the same thing. Two nodes have the same net name and therefore they're going to be electrically, electrically connected. So that's important. Labels can also be really useful for understanding the function of various traces. Um, so you could label, uh, label nets or label wires that are totally fully connected and don't need a label, but it can be useful for, again, functionality reasons and visual reasons. Um, this can come back, this will come back later in the layout section. I'll mention this again. I'm not going to label anything here, um, but it is a good policy generally to do so. So there are also special nets for power and ground. Um, these come with their own symbols, meaning that anything the symbol is connected to is automatically connected to the net of that name. Um, there is some caution you have to exercise here because there's some subtlety that I'm not covering that can cause ERC warnings and errors, um, but generally speaking, we're going to be fine or you can ignore those warnings. Um, but let's go ahead and try it out with our ground connection. So we're going to hit P, like tap the P key, or we can uh, click the ground icon on the right. So over there. Um, to open the power symbols window. And it looks very similar to the add symbols window. There's really no uh, difference other than it's only got power symbols instead of other stuff in it, those special power symbols. Um, if you open the power library, you'll see a whole bunch of symbols that look similar to this, this like arrow with the plus a, a voltage above it. Um, note that these create a global net, not a local net. Um, for a single um, single page schematic, not super important. Um, you can use local labels to to identify this, but generally you'd want a global label to better. You want a global label um, to connect to these for uh, for larger schematics, multi page schematics. Um, so this is one of those label restriction error or label restrictions, label naming restrictions. You can't um, add anything that'll have, like this global label will take priority over your local labels and that'll give you problems later if you've um, generated your own labels with the like plus one V2 name and then you added the symbol in there. Um, so if we filter by ground, cause that's what we're looking for, we get a bunch of different ground symbols and nets. Um, there are reasons to use all of these different ones, but uh, for this schematic, we only have a single ground uh, common return path. Um, so the regular GND symbol is what we're looking for. So just uh, click OK to place it uh, below the battery's negative symbol, but not connected to it. So uh, apparently I didn't place it below the battery. I placed it below the IC, but either one is totally fine um, because you're going to go ahead and place the other one shortly here. Um, but similar to the wires, um, you want to leave a small distance, similar to how you don't bend directly off the pin. You want to leave a small amount of distance um, so that you can identify that there is a connection there and it's not just sitting close to it. Um, so we'll leave that little small area. Um, and yeah, we can add uh, an, at least one more ground symbol here. And then you can go ahead and either add additional ground symbols in the same way, or you can duplicate them or copy and paste them. But we need three more, one below this input cap, one below the output cap, and one at the bottom of the set resistor. Um, and so however you want to do that, you can go ahead and do that now. And it should look something like this with these five ground symbols. So go ahead and actually wire these. 
Um, as a fun fact, if you place the symbols such that the pins are actually touching and then you drag one of the symbols away, the, a wire will actually be automatically generated between those two pins. Um, so that can be useful, just something to think about. Uh, beautiful. So um, everything that's now, every pin that is now tied to one of these GND symbols is going to be all electrically connected through the net called GND. Um, so this is a really big power of nets as well. Um, you can have a ground symbol somewhere and then every other place is a ground throughout any amount of sheets is all going to be electrically connected. No need for direct connections with these drawn lines and wires, which would make big schematics completely insane to follow. So we're gonna do the same thing for the power symbol. So go ahead and for the like positive, the voltage, the battery voltage positive terminal, um, go ahead and open the power symbol and find an appropriate positive voltage symbol, whichever one you want, um, that seems appropriate. Um, three volts or VBAT or VDD, VCC, those kind of things, totally fine. Um, place it above the battery cells positive terminal and then go ahead and wire it. Probably take a second here to do that before continuing should look something like this. If you use a different power symbol, it's totally fine as long as it's not a ground. Um, although frankly, even a ground would work. It doesn't actually make a difference at this point. It's really just for your, again, symbol, symbols and schematics are really for you to read, not necessarily like, do they make any sense electrically? Um, so last, we're, we're gonna label the V in node. So um, go ahead and open the label thing. Um, but you might notice that in the, um, in the drop-down menu here, in the label properties window, uh, there's no ground or plus bat, which was my positive battery terminal label. Um, so why isn't that? Well, the answer is, as I've mentioned a couple of times now, is those are global net names, and this is the local label properties window. Kind of annoying. Um, you can generally, as I mentioned before as well, it's generally not good practice to use local labels for global nets because it does cause confusion to, as to where the rest of the net is and it also the KiCad might itself get confused. But it's totally fine for this because this symbol, this schematic because it's a single sheet. Um, so go ahead and you can actually type in plus bat or whatever your power symbol is um, into that label name and then click OK. And then you can go ahead and place it anywhere on that node. And that node, again, is anywhere that, that that wire is. That wire, everything that's connected to that wire is its node. So the last thing is to connect the switch, that uh, single, uh, I'm sorry, pin one of the switch to the plus bat terminal. Um, and you can do that however you want, uh, either a direct wire, which is doable here, or a label uh, if you wanted just a net, or you can connect it directly to its own version of the plus bat symbol, whichever you like. So take a second to make this connection before continuing. Fantastic, and this is a fully connected schematic. Congratulations. And with that, we're going to end part 4C of this video. Um, we covered uh, wiring and nets in this video. A PDF of the video is available um, below, linked, hopefully, and hosted on the Hives Wiki. In the next part, part 4D, we'll be focusing on uh, assigning footprints to the various symbols as well, and we will see you there.